As a freeze dry business owner, I'm just kind of very interested in the different types of array of products that you can do freeze drying. Really interested in the freeze dry dog food type of arena. So I'm in Petco right now, locally here in Boise, Idaho. And although this is a big chain, I wanted to just kind of see what they had to offer. So let's take a look at what products they have and the different types of brands that are doing freeze drying more on the larger wholesale side. We're most accustomed to freeze drying, you know, human type of things with candy and ice cream and fruit, vegetables, meals, things like that. But a lot of what's growing in popularity is other types of avenues. That's what I want all of us to think about when we're looking at freeze drying is yes, we have these machines and things might be going great in your freeze dry candy business, fruit, that type of thing. But if you want to start looking at diversifying, there's so many different options. That's why I feel also that this is just the beginning of a small business freeze drying industry. We've barely tapped the surface. Candy's going bonkers, and it's probably gonna continue that way because everyone loves candy in America. It's a huge billion dollar business. The pet food business is also huge. And um, I know that some of you probably even know about the freeze dried pet. Maybe you even do freeze dried pet food right now, but I'm not that familiar with it. And if you're not familiar with it, I just wanted to kind of do this vlog because I was going to do some grocery shopping next door, but I found Petco and I've seen freeze dried food here. So here's the first brand it has a whole shelf at Petco and it's called Stella and Chewy's. I'm sure you're familiar with it. If you have pets, I personally don't even have a dog. I don't have a cat or anything. I've been holding off because I got two young kids and that's busy enough for me. All right. What I grabbed off the shelf right here is just something random. This is the duck duck goose. Uh, kibble and it's 95% poultry bone and organ and what this says on the back of Stella and Chewy is I'm just gonna read this for you and I'll even show you part of the website a little bit but it says when I rescued Chewy from an animal shelter he was very sick pup his veterinarian suggested I put him on a raw diet similar to what dogs eat in the wild and Chewy recovered and both he and his friend Stella thrived on this diet so Chewy and Stella are dogs. I didn't know that actually <laughs> prior to recording this. Um, now, it says that basically they put together a bunch of different organic um, products in here that are just regular food items and they combine it into these little uh, kibble little things like this. Now, the one thing that I have read about freeze dried pet food is that you know, we're taking out all the water from all of this product, right? So I do know that you do want to reconstitute the freeze dried pet food for your dog and have a little bit of that water come back um, just because it's easier on their stomachs, things like that. And here's a couple other freeze dried brands right here. This is uh, the Origin. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm not familiar with some of these brands, but this is another top national brand of freeze dried pet food. And then they've also got this uh, Acania. I think I'm pronouncing that probably wrong. Uh, but if you're familiar with freeze drying pet food, these are the big top brands that are probably making a lot of money being in Petco right now. I'm gonna head over to the grocery store and get some other products and see what type of specials they have for fruit. I've got an event coming up here in the next couple days. So I wanted to make sure that I had plenty of stock up heading into the weekend. Let's head over to Winco, which is a local wholesale type of grocery store and uh, I'll do some video there. that I've been interested in doing is the mango. Now, if you have done mangoes before, I'd love to hear what you have been doing in the comments of this video because I did buy a mango slicer, but I've been finding that it actually still contains a lot of the mango fruit on the skin, even though I slice it. And I did do mangoes before just on a test run. And one of the things that I found was 
that it was not, I guess, very sweet anymore with the mangoes. And I didn't actually find that people bought it. So if mangoes have worked for you and you've added something to it, that would be great to add in the comments. I think everyone would love that. One of the things that you should take note of, and it's the end of November right now as I'm filming this, and a lot of fruit, it is not in season. So you're gonna pay a higher price for any type of fruit. And I've been very selective. I've been trying to find ways to consolidate and get better prices, but I just cannot find it. Things that are kind of priced decently right now are raspberries. There's also uh, bananas that are priced fine, but the strawberries right now, they're limiting the price of $2.72 a pound for strawberries to just two cartons. So, you know, it's not, there's just not very good deals right now. What I do in my freeze drying business is I just say that they're out of stock. You can't find it, don't list it for sale. And I try to focus on other things. So I obviously go for the raspberries. I try to get more people active in doing raspberries. If you're wondering how to store some of your freeze dried fruit in the cases like this right now, you wanna use some air sealed type buckets where you can get kind of a gamma seal lid where it has a rubber gasket to the lid type. That way it kind of keeps it airtight. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put desiccant packets in that type of bucket so that it keeps it dry. Now, the moisture, there shouldn't really be any moisture from your freeze dried fruit because you should be drying it more than eight hours on final dry. And if you're interested in more of my freeze drying videos on how to freeze dry fruit, you can click on the links below in the video description as well as you can take a look at other videos that I suggest in this video. The main point of all this is you have to be very meticulous on what you're going after at certain periods of the month as a freeze drying business, especially when you're small. So you gotta look at budgets, you gotta look at your pricing and make sure that you're buying in season and then that you're storing all of the freeze dried fruit that is in season. So use those gamma seal buckets. I've got links in the video description from Amazon of where I get the 12 gallon buckets that I store a lot of my fruit in as well as the smaller buckets that are more five gallon. One of the things you should know about freeze drying, especially if you're just starting out, is you're gonna to wanna to check with your cottage food laws to make sure that if you're gonna do more of a cottage food, homemade goods type of business with your freeze dryer, some of the products are gonna be limited or restricted. And what they call those foods is TCS foods, non-TCS foods. And non-TCS foods are ones that doesn't require any type of temperature control. And usually that falls into the cold side of ice cream as well as the heat side of anything that's already been cooked or you have to cook it and then freeze dry it. Health districts, state run type of agricultural departments, they're really kind of unfamiliar with freeze drying in my opinion. It's very new. A lot of people are getting into it. A lot of us are applying for applications for it. And so the fact that it's kind of new and not very well known about our process is why they put a lot of these restrictions in because nobody really knows what freeze drying the process does. So some states are gonna be more flexible than others. For example, I was able to do freeze dried ice cream when I first started in 2020 and even into 2021. Now in 2022, kind of late 2022, they changed the college food law in Idaho to not allow you to do freeze dried ice cream. You have to have a commercial kitchen that's licensed and have that food establishment permit to be able to do ice cream. So that's what I'm doing now. I rent a kitchen and I'm able to do freeze dried ice cream. So I'm gonna head down and get some ice cream. I prefer a certain brand, which I'll show you. And I found it holds up the most, it's high quality. And I'm sure if you've seen my freeze drying videos on freeze dried ice cream, you know what I mean. done doing my grocery shopping and also apparently looking at freeze-dried pet food even though I don't own a pet. I hope you enjoyed that. You know one thing I wanted to tell you about is this event that I'm doing that's kind of my final event for the Christmas and for 2023 is I'm kind of nervous 
and I get nervous about live events in person because I don't know what to expect. You know, you spend all this time prepping, getting a lot of different products and SKUs and you're doing ice cream if you can, you're doing fruit, you're doing different types of candies. And I just get nervous because I don't know whether something's gonna sell out. I would love to sell out of it. I don't know if I made too much, too little. And so I just want you to know that from someone who has this YouTube channel, who talks to you, who seems to know it all, I still get nervous and I still have kind of the jitters about doing live events because it's a lot of unknown. With live events, there's no way to predict what the attendance will be and also what kind of the ratio of people that are actually gonna buy your product. Now, the event organizer is gonna say, well, we had six to 7,000 people show up last year. Well, that's great, but you know, this is a different time. Interest rates have gone up. The last event that I did back in early November, it sucked. <laughs> I did not make great money compared to last year. In fact, it was down almost 40% of sales. And um, you know, some of that I think had to do with the event organizer. I just think they could have done a little bit more advertising. So you are kind of left open to that. What I liked about this new event that I'm doing that for the first time this year is they offered a social media boosting package, which I bought for like 65 bucks. And they really boosted the post that they did about me and my freeze drying business, freeze dry depot. And so it's been really nice being able to have someone who's gonna put in that effort to put a post out there and promote me and use that budget to promote the event. So I'm hoping for the best for this event, but at the same time, I'm nervous because I don't really know what to expect. In fact, this event used to coincide with the Boise Holiday Parade and the Boise Holiday Parade is back as well as this event is back for the first time since COVID. So since uh, 2019, she has not had the same weekend coincide. So she's really hoping that this uh, event and this, uh, the attendance will be much higher. And I, I am too. If you like this content of seeing what the day in the life of a free stripe business owner is like, I've got a couple other vlog episodes that I've done featuring my commercial kitchen to me doing another grocery run and things like that. And as always, do something great in your community using your freeze-dried business. We'll see you on the next video. Cheers.